am here talking to Diane Milgram, the exhibit interpreter for the Calvary Marine Museum, and we're in Drum Point Lighthouse right now. And I'm just going to talk to her today to find out kind of the behind the scenes of the lighthouse and all the things that she experiences that people on tours wouldn't necessarily see. So let's talk about what room we're in right now. Can you tell me a little bit about it? We're in the kitchen uh, of the lighthouse, and uh, we've got some things that would have been uh, here in the early 1900s that the lighthouse keeper's wife would use. Where there's a wood stove, there's an I an old wooden ice box <coughs> behind me. There is a little washboard and um, a pantry full of very old um, remedies and some. Um, kitchen um, spices, things like that, that the lighthouse keeper would have used. Very interesting to see all of that. Can you tell us a little bit about the family that lived here, the families that lived here before? Well, I do know more about the families that had the children. There were two different lighthouse keepers that had five children out here. The Weemses um, were here for 27 years, which was the longest, and they had five children. They had three boys and two girls, and unfortunately, um, the two girls died of influenza. and. Um, the Yatemans were here, uh, but they were only here for a short period of time, but they also had five children. And they moved on to Piney Point Lighthouse. So this is uh, the bedroom that's on the upper floor of the lighthouse. Um, it's very cute. It's the favorite, my favorite room in the whole lighthouse. It's got a little twin iron bed in here, um, and it's got a dormer window. This room's a little smaller. The bedroom's a little smaller than the other bedroom, but quite cozy. And um, I would love to sleep in this bedroom. Like I said, it's my favorite room. So here we are at the Mechanical Bell Striker, and we're going to learn a little bit about what this does. Well, this is the mechanism that would um, operate the fog bell. Whenever it was too foggy for the lights to be seen, they had a backup system, and that would have been a fog bell. And this is how the lighthouse keeper would wind up the weights. There's a series of six 100-pound weights in the closet below us. And um, like I had said before about electricity, they didn't have electricity, so they had to do everything virtually by hand. Um, but this would help them, and this would um, go for two hours when the lighthouse keeper wouldn't have to worry about ringing the bell. The weights would make it work, very much like a grandfather clock. And so this was all hooked together. It's very loud, and I can play a little bit of the recording for you. This bell striker would get pulled back, and it would hit the bell um, two times every 15 seconds. And if you can hit play on the recorder, we should be able to hear the bell ring. two to five miles depending on the weather and um, thankfully not all the time only when the weather was bad because that would get quite um, uh, it would very much get on my nerves if I had to listen to that all night long <laughs> and from what I've read in the logs they didn't sleep whenever it was foggy it was just too loud it's really interesting because you can tell this is very early technology but it's seen in a lot of what we have now today being used it's very basic and it would still work all we'd have to do is put one little piece back in it, and I think we could actually get it up and running again. How different would you say living in a lighthouse is than, than living in a, a normal house? house. <laughs> well, <laughs> certainly back then they would have had the challenges of getting supplies to the lighthouse. Um, also, uh, the children would have to be picked up by boat and um, taken to schools. And just the day-to-day the -day things that people experienced would, would have been a lot harder for them because... They were out uh, about 120 yards offshore, and they were over 10 feet of water. So it would have been a little more of a challenge um, to live in a lighthouse than in, in a normal house. So we are outside the lighthouse right now, and we are about to look at one of the main disadvantages of being in a lighthouse, and that is the outhouse. So why don't you tell me a little bit about the outhouse and, well, I guess... What else do you need to know about the lighthouse? <laughs> don't know how I can elaborate on that much, but um, basically it's just like a little closet that was hanging over the back outside of the lighthouse off the, the deck so that uh, when anybody used the light, the outhouse, uh, everything would just fall into the water. We're walking around the gallery area of the lighthouse now, which is a very narrow walkway around the lighthouse. And I was told that one of the lighthouse keepers that lived here uh, would run around basically jog before it was in fashion but he would keep an eye out for any boats that were, were coming by because uh, he didn't want anybody to think he was crazy I found that quite amusing because jogging is <laughs> so popular now and he was almost embarrassed that he was doing it so I'm not sure when that was but I, I did read that about one of the lighthouse keepers this is the boat Davit 
that we have out at Drum Point Lighthouse. There were two originally on the lighthouse, one over each of the doorways. But because the water got shallower, they moved one, took one off and they moved the other one to the, where the deeper part of the water was. So basically, this is a series of ropes and pulleys and they would attach whatever, most of the time, the boat, the lighthouse boat. Um, and in the center was a crank and they can wind it up and get the boat up out of the water. You especially wanted to get your boat up out of the water in the wintertime because uh, ice could do damage to a wooden boat. So you wanted to get it raised up out of the water. And also they would use it to bring larger pieces of furniture into the lighthouse when they were moving in or out. I know you're the one who locks up the lighthouse a lot of the time. Have you ever experienced anything strange in here? Or I know a lot of people ask if it's haunted maybe just because everything's so to date. They, they do ask if, a lot of people do ask if it's haunted. I opened up the lighthouse. I came in and this chair was sitting uh, in the middle of this bedroom. And um, I didn't move it here. I went inside and questioned all the other interpreters. Uh, if they had moved the chair in here, nobody said they moved the chair in here. So I'm not quite sure why I was sitting here. Nobody said they had moved it. So I chalk it up to maybe the ghosts were busy moving furniture around that night and forgot to put this chair back. So that's my story about one of my ghost stories about Drum Point Lighthouse. But I'm not scared to come into the lighthouse. I, I'm hopefully, if there's any spirits in here, I've made friends with them over the years. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the steps that lead up to each level. Very narrow walkways, spiral staircase. We're going to see where the light is. And here we are. This is a fourth order Fresnel lens. And um, this one could be seen about 11 miles away when it was lit. This is one of the few things that people get to see. We do not allow people out on this level of the lighthouse. Uh, the, the roof is um, tin and it's kind of slippery. And so we don't allow visitors to go out. But, and it is kind of like not very easy to get out of. Oh wow, we're going all under here. <laughs> it's kind of neat being out here though. Yeah. You can see for a long way away. It's beautiful. And there's a nice view of the bridge. You really don't want to be up here in a very cold, windy day. <laughs> Take the flag down super fast <laughs> on days like that. So as part of uh, locking up the lighthouse, we have to shut all the doors on the lower level of the lighthouse. And I'm going to shut you in this room of the lighthouse tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Closing at the Lighthouse with Diane Nagram. I hope you guys enjoyed our exclusive tour of behind the scenes in the lighthouse. And I hope you come by and see it for yourself. Bye, come see me. <laughs>